Yeah, I'm gonna. I created Pinwiki. Um, we're gonna talk about it. <laughs> uh, so I'll give you a little brief rundown of kind of where we began. Um, many 13 years ago now. Um, I was 16. Our very grew up in a tech background. Uh, my dad do, did and still does web hosting. Um, so I kind of already had played around a lot with web technology and stuff like that. <clears throat> when I was six years old, I had, you know, created my first website and stuff like that. Um, so already I kind of had the technical background of it. Um, and I'd already been kind of beating around an idea of how can we gather? There's so much pinball knowledge out there. We need to gather in one place and document it all for, for the historical purposes of it. And, and to keep, get all the information to be findable. Um, <clears throat> so, some of you were aware of uh, Clay Harrell's guides at the time it had disappeared recently. Um, and there was a lot of negative hate going on on that. And I'm not going to touch on that side of it, but there was a lot of negative hate going on at that time and uh, kind of wanted to refocus that energy into something more positive. Um, so I kind of looked at it as a great opportune time. Um, and within two days of finding that out, we had Pinwiki launched on April 21st, 2011. Um, so we, we kind of tried to refocus the energy and, and kind of point it in a much better direction. So we uh, we started hitting the ground running. A lot of people jumped in early. Uh, we had a lot of early contributors gathering info and, and documenting even some of the basics. Um, we, as we've matured, we've definitely gotten a lot of more of the intricate and kind of uh, loose edge cases documented. But early on, we we're trying just trying to get base repair information. Um, our two really main sections that kind of developed well are probably some of the most built games ever. Uh, the Bally, classic Bally Stern games um, and our System 3 through 7 uh, Williams documentation. Um, the, the Bally Stern stuff was put together mainly by uh, Steve Culpa and Jim Paulson. Um, they put a lot of effort in. They took some of the resources they already had documented on their own websites to get images contributed, not just you know descriptions and wording and things like that and kind of really put it together. And then our William stuff uh, for system three through seven, I don't know his full actual name. He goes by William Firepower. Um, he documented a ton of stuff. And with that, he's also, he loves the game Firepower. Um, so he's drawn a lot of, redrawn a lot of the documentation that was hard to read for William stuff. And again, freely put it up on Pinwiki to share with everyone. Um, so our community kind of came together and, and focused in and started putting things together. Um, with that, trying to get some of our early trust, uh, we actually put up two mirrors of the site because everyone was afraid Pinwiki would do the same thing the Clay Herald guys did, which was disappear. Um, and we wanted to prove that we were here for the long stay, which obviously we are again, <laughs> 13 years on. Um, Chuck Hess and Martin Weiss both hosted, um, mirrors of the, uh, wiki. We would download the data about once a week and put it up, um, We've, now that we've proven we don't need that anymore, we haven't continued to do that. But at the time, that was to help build the trust of the community. Um, and not long after that, about four or five months in, uh, Jim Paulson uh, was able to set up uh, some unprecedented licensing with Gottlieb. Uh, the Gottlieb rights are still protected and owned and actively maintained to this day. Um, so one, some of the things we can't host are full-on manuals. Uh, but we were able to get some exclusions and licensing to be able to, if we're talking about a certain section of a, a circuit, we can put up the schematics of that specific area and explain it. Um, and we set up a really great relationship with them. They've been always been well for us. Um, never had an issue with anything we've put up. And that kind of helped document stuff that others hadn't always been able to document. Um, and again, kind of helped with, you know, was not a single person. I did not do all of this on my own. Jim Paulson was able to, you know, set that up, talk to them, and, and get that going for us and get that relationship built. Um, again, community effort. It's a huge, huge contribution from a lot of people to get to where we did. So a little less than a year in, we start having traffic problems of where we've grown too popular. Um, our hosting couldn't, couldn't hold it. Um, we were getting suspended for using too many resources. I was originally actually on his servers um, and had <laughs> had to move to separate servers because we had outgrown his capabilities. Um, at the, again, about a year in, we were doing about 30 gigabytes a month of game, uh, bandwidth. Um, and most of our site is text, not images. I mean, there's some diagrams with it, but a lot of it is text. We were getting tons and tons of views uh, looking for, again, this repair information. Um, so we've steady upgraded uh, a couple times now, but we, we upgraded, got things locked back in. Um, 
<clears throat> lots of upgrades to our the underpinning software. Our software is just the MediaWiki software. It's the same thing that runs Wikipedia, which is great for us. It gives us a lot of support for issues, uh, feature upgrades, and, and you know, it obviously can be very big. <laughs> Um, another minor issue we had in there was some uh, security issues with spamming and, and attempts to take, hijack the site. We got them under control and taken care of. Um, and now we actually have some non-pinball people, but IT background people, including myself and some other people who uh, daily, not daily, sorry, weekly review anything that's been uploaded, uh, which is usually a lot of Chris Hibbler's contributions. <laughs> Uh, anything that's been uploaded, all the site code, and make sure there's no updates and stuff like that to keep keep things running smooth. Um, so after we got a lot of our basis rep of repair documented, we kind of started moving on beyond just the repair site, the side of things. We are the, the place for everything pinball, not just the place for everything pinball repair. Um, so one of the... The great contributions of, I don't actually know his full for, uh, real name either, Force Flow, as most people know from Pinside. Um, he maintains a lot of our, our non-repair information, such as the pinball show schedule. He is on top of it. As soon as the show changes date, gets posted, anything, it gets put up there. We have a whole page, and every year we update it for the next year to get dates on it. Um, another great community contribution has been the Will It Fit section. Everyone wants to know if their car will fit whatever pinball machine in it. So there's a ton of documentation of not only, yes, this, you know, my Ford Flex will fit a pinball machine in it, but okay, it'll fit, you know, a WPC, but not a, you know, Jersey Jack, whatever, you know, some games are a little bit bigger than others. And a lot of people have contributed to document that. Um, we started a, a history section that needs a lot more work to it to, to really fill it in. Um, but we'd like to document the historical side again, not just the technical side. Um, great information like leg and glass measurements, you know, a, a lot of, you know, 70s Gottliebs took 31 inch legs, but they don't belong on, you know, your 90s Williams game. Um, so you can kind of see what era legs came from glass sizes. You know, if your translate glass is broken, it's easy enough to look up on PinWiki. It's in our, our general section of information. Um, and then there's a ton of guides now. Um, anything from dying plastic parts to some basic repair information and things of that nature. Um, that have been documented, and we've had people uh, want to document specific projects and stuff like that, too. So we have some, some of that too. So where we are now today, 13 years on, um, most of our popular games are very well documented. WPC, uh, your again, you know, your classic Valley Stearns, your System Three through Sevens. Um, we've been steady working on getting a lot of our more current games uh you know there's a lot more manufacturers now than when we started um so anything from american to chicago and you know jersey jack we're trying to document the modern games to stay with the times um everyone's bringing them home or on operating on the location and games are more complicated than ever these days um so trying to get that information documented is kind of where a lot of our focus is heading and also worked on um as well um, we have sections for some of the more rare games, uh, Zacharia games, for example. It's hard to find repair information on because there's not that many of them out there. Um, <clears throat> so we, we've started documenting a lot of that. Uh, one of the interesting sections, uh, Ken Layton, before he passed, was able to put together a lot uh, with the Bally home model pinball machines from the 80s. Everyone thought they were built like junk, but they play well. They're basically a 1976 Hocus Pocus without the center spinner, um, and they play well. Uh, but you would find them working for a hundred bucks because no one knew how to, to keep them running. Um, Ken did a great job documenting crossovers from the home model part numbers to, to the standard commercial ballet coils. Uh, some of the there's two different series boards in those games, and he was able to document both of them pretty extensively too. Um, and again, providing information that wasn't available anywhere else. So. Oh, and I forgot to touch some of the things we're now also looking at. Um, standardizing every section was kind of written by someone who had an expertise in their background of that specific area uh, we're looking now to try and kind of standardize the format a little bit more on how, where that information is so when you're used to reading the wpc section and now you need to work on a gottlieb game you kind of know oh this information's in this section and things of that nature and kind of working to to standardize some of that um 
some of our special thanks again i named a few of our early and, and continuing supporters uh chris hibbler who's here is our my number one right man on keeping the site running documenting new things he's our evangelist who speaks to everyone positively if there's an issue i don't get a lot of time on the forums to to be able to see when someone mentions something about Poon Wiki, Chris, Chris brings up any concerns to my attention, and I really greatly appreciate that. Um, Jim Paulson, uh, Chuck Hess, Chuck, my dad, uh, Martin, uh, we used Steve Culpa, Richard Firepower, uh, Leon Bohr before he passed was actually gave again through Jim Paulson helped us out a lot. Um, all of his repair information, we were able to mirror it before it all disappeared with his passing. Um, and he also contributed some uh, test information even before he gave us his site to, to keep and hold on to. Um, so that was very phenomenally helpful. If you've ever used his test rounds, they're a great help in troubleshooting. Um, Ken Layton, uh, Lloyd Olson, uh, Kerry Emming, and I'm sure I'm missing some more names, uh, but those guys really early on helped us start, get hit the ground running and get going, advocated for us, helped with adminning everything. Um, and we're now, as you can see, up to 486 different pages of information on a ton of uploads. There's almost 5,000 uploads now of various pictures, manuals, things like that. Um, we've done our best to document everything within the site instead of just URL links to other websites because links die. The internet is never, the internet lasts forever, but it also doesn't last forever. Things change. Um, and we've been trying to document everything in one spot so it doesn't disappear. Um, and we are now up to 664 registered users. Most of them have signed up, contributed one or two things, and are disappeared from. Um, and that's okay. Uh, we love if you can tr constantly contribute. There's you know grammatical errors that may need edited, even if you don't know pinball repair stuff like that. But if you just want to contribute one time to tell me what vehicle you moved your pinball machine in, so be it. We're we're always happy to get any of that information. Do you, do you have anything for the uh, number of users? That's what I said. We had about no, no, oh no, regular users, users are just those yeah, who interact I, with the site. Off the top of my head, I don't have a unique page view <laughs> numbers. Off the top of my head, we're running about 200, 300 gigabytes of bandwidth a month now. Um, it traffic has never slowed on the site. Uh, we we definitely are not talked about as much anymore because we're not the brand new Pinwiki developing. Um, but we've the traffic has never stopped. We we are a very heavily re used resource, and it's only growing. Um, so what's next? Um, as I touched on, we've kind of worked on some of our more generalized information. Uh, with that said, though, I want to grow, grow more of that. Again, we're trying to be the place for, for everything pinball. So while we're strong point is definitely our repair information. If you have some pinball story you want to document, pinball designer stuff like that, things that don't necessarily fit into IPDB, for example, we want to document them. Um, as well, we're also trying to document all the new games and systems. Like I said, we have more manufacturers than ever putting games out. Um, a lot of them do seem to be using the P-Rock system or FAST system and stuff like that. So some of the generic information is already kind of uh, <clears throat> documented, but every game and every system is unique. So not that there's any manufacturers sitting in this room. If there is any who hear this, though, happily reach out. We'd love to get some of your machines, tear them apart, document them, and send them back. I'm not trying to keep your game, but trying to document some of this would be great. Getting not just the information out of manuals, but pictures of mechanisms, games, things that are unique and stuff like that is, goes a long way. Um, and as again, I said, standardizing some of the formatting. Um, we've gotten a long way from when we first started. And when we first started, it was definitely a information dump, get it all up there and kind of work through it. So now, We've had some time to do some formatting, and we want to continue that. Um, and the next two items kind of go hand in hand. Uh, we're about to do a, another server migration. Again, as I've said, we've constantly grown. Uh, we're going to be up, upgrading our servers to be even stronger. Um, and with that, and once that is done, we are in the process of beta testing, launching some forms um, with a big focus on uh, repair. Um, the goal is to be very heavily mod uh, moderated. It's not going to be the Wild West. We don't need 1,700 opinions. It's about getting repair information, documenting, and, and, and focusing on the pinball information at hand. Um, it's integrated with the wiki as well to be able to pull sections from the wiki to put into form posts if you're trying to describe how to fix an issue to someone, um, as well as logins will be standardized between them, and that'll help clean up some of the back end for us. Um, so we're beta testing it now. 
Uh, we're getting all the technical side worked on, tested out, and here in the next probably month or so, um, our admins will get some access to it to kind of give us our feedback on that. And then sometime about the beginning of 2025, I'm not saying January 1st, but that's you know roughly the goal, uh, we're going to launch them. Um, and again, with a big focus, heavily moderated, we're not trying to argue in Vicar. It's about the, the repair information um, and good discussion versus bickering, I guess, is the best way to put it. Um, so that's that's where we're going now is going to add that. And that's kind of our, our next step into to providing more repair and just, you know, the location for pinball stuff. Uh, we're not trying to replace a pin side or anything like that. I think that also has its place. Um, but we want to provide a more calm, organized type location for pinball discussion. So, um, And then in my final point, um, very close to me, I know very close to Chris Hibbler, Jim Paulson passed on us uh, roughly around this time last year. Um, he was a very early supporter, contributor, and voice for PinWiki. He gave us a lot of information that he had stored away in his both his head and on his computer and both information and pictures. Um, and uh, we miss him. He was uh, we would not be here today where we're at without him. Um, so I just want to give a little in memoriam for him. Um, it was definitely well earned. So. Is there any questions about PinWiki? <laughs> I'll start out. Uh, you made a passing reference to the manufacturers. Do you see any hope of getting some synergy with the tech support teams at any of the manufacturers? I know in the past, at least with Spooky, uh, we have talked back and forth and gotten some repair information from them. Uh, we're now kind of looking to start documenting some of their stuff even in more in depth and they've always been very open to that. Um, so yes, I do think we have some, some in-grounds on that. Um, some other manufacturers I, I have, have reached out and heard nothing. Um, I've heard some say would like to support that in the future, but we're not in a position to do that just yet. Um, so I think we're slowly getting that page open for it. Um, I know some of the, I wouldn't say negative, but some of the, the holdback seems to be, uh, there's a lot of competition now and the documenting current systems, no one kind of wants their trade secrets out there, I guess. Uh, and not that we're looking to dig that deep into the repair side of it, uh, but that seems to be a little bit, some of that information is a little harder to get obtained now because of that. So, I uh, have to confess that I'm not very familiar with your site, but okay. it sounds <laughs> very interesting, and I certainly will check it out awesome. at my first op opportunity. But I did want to have a uh, ask a question. Mm -hmm. um, you have uh, your, your friend and early supporter, uh, memorialized there. Is there any thought about doing that within your system as well for people who are currently with us and those who have passed? Uh, I think there's definitely room for that. Um, More broadly, what are you doing about people in pinball? Yeah. Is that a thing? So uh, people in general, we have very lightly treaded on documenting people in pinball. You know, good way to put a game designer, oh, game programmer, stuff like that. Um, it takes a village. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Is yes. there a section we can put So that in? we do have a little, some limited sections of that. We need to kind of develop that more. Um, if that's something you're interested in, there's a contact yes, button I, on yes, PinWiki. On, on the left sidebar of PinWiki, there's a contact button. Shoot yeah. a message over. Um, okay. And if there's something that you feel is missing or not sure how to even approach okay. that, absolutely. Can I tell you why I asked that question? Yeah, go for it. Uh, Wikipedia mm. is seems to be uninterested in documenting the history of people in pinball. Yeah. They have told me directly that some of the entries that I tried to make, the person is not significant enough to be included on their site. So I would quite like to have these people that are significant to us yeah. remembered somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. No, I again as the the all encompassing the place for everything pinball as, as our slogan. We absolutely want that reach out to me and we can absolutely get that worked on. I would love to do something like that. So anything else? I got another question then. All right. Uh, I tried to register to be a user and it said it, it's, it's some step in the process. I was going to get an email or 
you know, some next step didn't happen. Okay. That was a couple of years ago, so maybe debug that. But uh, now that I can see that I could be user number 666, <laughs> I don't know if I want to or if I want to hold off a little longer and let someone else be that. <laughs> he wants the number. So Okay. So to go a little hand in hand with that, um, our user numbers, registered user numbers, as, as I've touched on a little bit, most of them are not very active. Uh, part of with the the repair forms, we're working on the integration of single sign-on basically to, to simplify it. So you don't have an account for the wiki, you don't have an account for the form separately. In that process and part of what we're beta testing now, um, we're gonna be cleaning a lot of that out. Um, and then it'll be tied to an account on the form, which is much easier to manage. Um, okay, so, so you might find my partially completed yeah, registration. We, uh, we did, I know a few years back, have some bugs we got with that, the current existing system got them worked out. So that may have gotten aid in that process. Um, so again, if you ever have an issue, there's a contact button on the website. If you also want to, Chris Hibbler is always on the forums and always listening. He will gladly point me in the direction if I miss something. So definitely always reach out if you have an issue. We're here to talk, so. I'm one of those occasional users. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, I'm curious. You know, I'm sure at the beginning there was a huge influx of contributions. Is, yeah. How, how's that look now? You know, activity is it pretty steady, growing, declining? Nothing will compare to the first probably six months of you know information dump as I call it. There was so much information coming in, and at the time. <laughs> Every single edit, we still, you know, review edits to make sure nothing malicious has happened. You know, someone makes an accidental mistake and deletes a whole page, stuff like that. So we still review them. Um, back then, it was insane. Uh, someone contributes something at least, uh, you know, if once a day or once every two days type deal. We're still, whether it's major information or minor information, we're always getting something. Um, Chris has retired from his day job and his last I know is still doing pinball repair. Uh, so he gets a lot of oddball stuff. And with the great part of that is when a board comes on his bench, if it's not documented on the wiki, that man whips out his camera and immediately takes a high res photo and it immediately gets uploaded. There's so many oddball Williams boards, for example, the, with oddball part numbers that this man has gotten pictures of that I didn't even know existed. Um, so yeah, there's still, it's not anywhere like it was obviously because there's nothing to compare to that initial in rush, but we are still getting, more information, it's still maturing. Hi, you were talking earlier about a website where a lot of this information came from a long time ago, maybe a couple decades ago? So Clay Harrell's guides, uh, pinrepair.com now, so he's rewritten some of them, putting them back up, was at the time, uh, before PinWiki had started, the, in my eyes, the place to find that pinball repair information. Um, at some point, a little before uh, PinWiki went up, that site, he on his own choice and, and you know, I had to talk to him. That information got pulled from the internet. Yeah, it disappeared. Yes. That's why I wonder. So that's yeah. kind of where we, we, I was already beating around the idea of a, a pinball wiki at the time. And that kind of took the opportunity because there was so much hate and negativity going on towards Clay on that. Um, and I'd rather focus the community again to contributing in a centralized location. So we kind of kind of took the opportunity that was there to, to fill in where that had disappeared. So. <laughs> yeah. and. And a big difference is that uh, Clay's website was basically the voice of Clay only. Where yeah. This is the whole community. So that's groupware versus a website. Today, he had a lot of help. <laughs> and that's part of where some of the hate was that it yeah. was all his content uh, that he took away. Uh, I'm glad he brought it back, though, because he, he's, he's, he's been a positive for the community. He really has. He's passionate about pinball, just like we are. And we need more, not less. So it's good, good to have him back. Uh, he was tickled to death to see that a 16-year-old kid had that much interest in it. Um, we did, we did meet with him here at Expo a couple times. Um, it just, it, it was, it was a positive thing. It wasn't a, and no, no hate there at all about him starting the wiki at all. Um, so it's, it's been good. It's been good. He beat that idea around for about a year and a half before we actually put it up. Last call. All right. All right. Stay up there, Walter. <laughs> Thank you guys very much for your time. I appreciate y'all listening to me ramble on about my website. <laughs> <laughs>